let one ant stand up to us, then they all might stand up. Those puny little ants outnumber us a hundred to one. And if they ever figure that out, there goes our way of life. What's going on, duelists? It's your boy, Nick, bringing you today on the channel for the very first time a Bee Trooper Battle Wasp deck, or better known as just an insect deck at this point, because it's pretty much just chock full of generic insect good stuff. Think of it like Dragon Link, but with bugs. Um, so I'm very excited to bring you this profile today on the channel. It's been something that I've been working on with a close friend of mine. Um, he wanted to build a bug deck, and uh, he asked me if I could uh, give him a helping hand, and I was actually very happy to do so. So, um, we w got our, you know, brains together, basically, and decided to come up with a list. It's a 41-card list, and this is a budget build, so anybody who is getting into the game for the first time and wants to play a deck that's kind of, you know, combo-oriented, uh, this is a very good entry point because all the cards are very cheap. And honestly, the deck is very fun to play, and it also has some pretty interesting combo lines. Now, is it the most powerful deck? Absolutely not. But at the end of the day, it does show um, the person piloting the deck, you know, the basic mechanics of link summoning as well as synchro summoning and whatnot. And like I said, I couldn't be happier to bring you the deck today on the channel for the first time. So, for those of you new, welcome. My name is Nick. We do Yu-Gi-Oh! content mainly focused around rogue and casual decks alike. If that's the kind of Yu-Gi-Oh! that you're interested in, then I highly encourage you to subscribe because um, I do a lot of very cool, unique, and fun deck profiles. Uh, I'm working my way to 1,000 subscribers and um, I need your help to get there. So if you're watching this right now and you're not already subscribed, smash that subscribe button, like the video, and let me know what you think of Insects or Bee Trooper Battle Wasp. So with the intro now out of the way, we are going to dive into this 41 card list. And you know how we do it here on the channel, folks. We always start with the monster lineup. Now we are playing triple copies of Battle Wasp Sting the Poison. This card is an amazing starter. Not only is it a level two wind insect tuner, but upon normal or special summon, allows you to add a Battle Wasp monster from your deck to your hand, except a copy of itself. Now, if that wasn't crazy enough, it also has a quick effect, um, which you can use on either player's turn. By attributing one other insect monster and targeting an effect monster your opponent controls for cost, you can negate that monster's effects until the end of the turn. So it's also kind of like an effect veiler on legs, just with a little bit of extra cost. Um, so we run triple copies of Sting, obviously, because it is an amazing starter. And the cards he lets you search are actually pretty cool. Uh, moving on, we do play a playset of Bee Trooper Scout Buggy. Uh, Scout Buggy is another great starter in this deck. Again, it's a Wind Insect Effect Monster. And upon Normal or Special Summon, uh, it allows you to Special Summon one Bee Trooper Scout Buggy from your hand, deck, or the graveyard. So it literally, you summon this and it summons another copy of itself. Just giving you that amazing fodder you're going to need on field to do those synchro plays and or link plays. Uh, so it's something that I'm very uh, proud to run in this deck. And obviously a card that should always be a 3 of staple in uh, most builds. Um, keep in mind that while it is on the field, you are locked into insect monsters. Uh, but that's not a problem for this deck given that you're pretty much only summoning insects exclusively. Uh, moving on to another card that can also be a starter in some scenarios is Triple Copies of Resonance Insect. Now this is an older insect monster, and because it's an older monster, it has the benefit of not being hindered by once per turn clauses like most modern cards are today. This card is absolutely really busted in this deck. Um, pretty much, if it's sent to the, from the field to the graveyard, you get to add a level 5 or higher insect monster from the deck to your hand. Keep in mind that is not once per turn. Uh, then, if this card is banished, you get to send an insect monster from your deck to the graveyard, except a copy of itself. So not only does this card let you search out high-level insects from deck to hand, but if it's banished, it also lets you foolish burial any insect uh, you want except itself. Now, there is no once-per-turn clauses on this card, and this deck does an amazing job at actually abusing the living hell out of uh, this card, which is pretty cool. So, moving on with the... Uh, we got rid of the starters. Now we're going to dive into the extenders. We played two copies of Pin the Bullseye, followed by two copies of Twin Bow the Attacker, Followed by two copies of Bee Trooper Scale Bomber, and then rounding off our extenders 
with two copies of Fairy Ant, the Circular Sorcerer. Now, all of these bugs share one thing in common, and that's the fact that they are pretty much free extenders. Uh, pin the Bullseye, if you control an insect monster, you can special summon Pin the Bullseye from your hand. In addition to that, you get to prick your opponent for 200 life point damage. Uh, you get to burn them, which is kind of funny. Um, watch that probably come up most games. Uh, then you have Twinbow the Attacker. He can special summon himself uh, during your main phase. Uh, however, when you do that, you're locked into insects for the rest of the turn, which again isn't really a problem for this deck since we only uh, are playing insects exclusively for the most part. Um, in addition to that, he does have an additional effect where he can make a second attack during each battle phase. Now that doesn't come up all the time, but there are times when it can. Uh, moving on though, we have Scale Bomber. Scale Bomber, um, if an insect monster is normal or special summon to your field, except during the damage step, Scale Bomber can special summon himself, which again makes him a really good extender. In addition to that, um, he has an, another effect where well, when a monster your opponent controls activates its effect, quick effect, you contribute one insect monster, including itself, and uh, destroy it. So it's kind of like an effect veiler, but from the field, which is pretty cool. And then the last one being Fairy Ant, the Circular Sorcerer. This is a newer uh, insect monster that came out of Photon Hypernova. N not only is it a tuner, but it says if you have an insect or plant in uh, either graveyard, you can special summon this card from your hand. Then um, you can only special summon it once per turn this way. One cool thing about this card is that the special summon effect is not activated. So think of it like a Cyber Dragon almost. It's not an activated effect to summon. In addition to that, um, this card, if it's, uh, if this card you control will be used as synchro material for an insect or a plant synchro monster, you can treat it as a non-tuner. So this card really gives you a lot of flexibility. Uh, whether you need it as a tuner or a non-tuner, it helps you be either or, which is really cool. Uh, the reason why we're on two copies of all four of these, uh, extenders is because a lot of them are hard onces. Well, not a lot of them. All of them are hard ones per turns on their summon conditions. And we don't want to brick on duplicate copies of all of these because, you know, opening duplicates of like pin or twin or scale, for example, it's just, it feels really bad because you can only use their extender effects only once per turn. So that's why we're just on two ofs for the most part, because again, we just want this deck to be as consistent as possible. Opening a single starter and an extender is basically full combo in this deck, which is really nice. Uh, so moving on. Uh, past the extenders now to so some more of the utility cards. We are playing uh, double copies of Beat Trooper Sting Lancer. Not only is this card an amazing hand trap, it effectively functions kind of like an insect version of the Abyssal, where um, during the main phase, quick effect, you get to target an insect monster in your grave and any monster in your opponent's graveyard. Um, you special summon the Sting Lancer from your hand, and if you do, you place the targeted monsters in the bottom of the decks. So it's like graveyard disruption. Like I said, similar to Abyss Deal, but not exactly. The only uh, benefit is that you don't have to worry about the monster you're targeting being a light or dark. He just targets any monster that the opponent has in grave and uh, any insect you have in your graveyard. And he's a free 2400 body. In addition to that, upon his normal or special summon, he lets you add a Beat Trooper Spell or Trap from the deck to your hand, which is just really insane. Also, I love, absolutely love the artwork on this card. So uh, we're just playing it as a two of. Um, could you run three of it? Yes, but again, it is a hard once per turn on both of its effects, so I'm just running two just so I don't avoid bricking on the, on the card. Now moving into some of our uh, one-ofs, um, we play one copy of Gokapol. This is an amazing card to send to the graveyard off Resonances, uh, Resonance Insects effects when it's banished. Um, if this card is sent to the graveyard, you get to add a level 4 insect monster from the deck to your hand. So he just searches any level 4 insect. Uh, which could be a number of things, which we'll get into. But um, he has another effect where if you send a normal monster, you can actually special summon it, and then you can uh, destroy a card on the field whose attack is higher than that monster's. But I felt that that effect was pretty situational um, because the only time where it's viable is if you're going second. And this, again, this deck doesn't have the highest of ceilings, so going second can be a bit of a struggle for this deck, especially game one. At post side, it gets better. But, um, you know, I felt like if you're using Gokapol to break a board, the likelihood of it being negated is pretty high. So I felt that it wasn't worth playing the one uh, normal monster brick in the main deck. So we're just on the one Gokapol. Moving on, we're on one copy of Infinite Antlion. This is a really cool tech choice. Again, another newer card out of Hypernova. This card has a few effects, uh, the most relevant being that when it's normal or special summoned, you can equip an insect monster from your hand or graveyard to this card as an equip spell that gives it 500 attack and defense uh, boost. 
which is really nice. Not only does that help you get into some of your fusion monsters that you play in your extra deck, which I'll explain when we get there, but um, also just you can re-equip the resonance from the graveyard to this card and then link this off, which would put the resonance back in grave, allowing you to trigger its search effect again, which is really cool. In addition to that, though, uh, once per turn at the start of the damage step, uh, when your insect monster battles, you get to target a card you control and a card the opponent controls and destroy them. And if that wasn't crazy enough, uh, when your opponent declares an attack, you can actually special summon this card from your hand. So as a one-off, this card is really nice, gives you some spot removal, as well as allows you to recycle uh, you know, resonances. That way you can put them back in grave and trigger their effects again, which is pretty cool. Uh, again, moving on with the rest of our one-offs, is one Arbalest the Rapid Fire. This card is nice as a follow-up play, uh, you know, after turn one. You know, for turn three, you can uh, search this through cards like, you know, Re um, Gokapol, for example, because he lets you search a level four. And this is just great follow-up. Upon normal summon, you can target a level three or lower insect and grave and special summon that monster to your field in defense position. Um, he also floats if he's destroyed by an opponent's card, but again, that seldom comes up. Um, so we just play the Arbalist as a one-off because it isn't really a starter. It's more of a follow-up play. We do, however, play the one copy of Assault Roller. I guess you could say that this card is another extender in a way because you can banish an insect from your graveyard and then special summon this card from your hand. Um, again, he also has a, an effect that floats if he's killed by battle. That seldom comes up, but you mainly use this card just as a free extender that you can search by banishing any insect and you special the Assault Roller, allowing you to either make Synchro plays or, or Link Climb uh, even higher. We then play one copy of Bio Insect Armor. This is another newer card out of Hypernova. This card is effectively a retrain of... Um, the Insect Armor with Laser Cannon, I think is what it was called. It was an equip spell from way back in the day. But this card is a really interesting effect. It says if it's in your hand or grave and you do not control Bio Insect Armor, you can target an insect you control and equip this card to it. Again, from the hand or grave, which is nice. The only caveat is that um, you banish the insect that it's equipped to when it leaves the field and you banish this card. Again, that seems terrible, but honestly, it's not really that relevant in the grand scheme of things, which you mainly use this card for, because um, while it's equipped, uh, the equipped monster gains 1500 attack and 2000 defense during the battle phase and main phase two only. Uh, again, that seems very specific, but this is designed to help you get uh, to one of your fusion monsters in the extra deck we're playing, which again, we'll get to shortly. But you can also use this um, to equip to any bug you control, and it just gains 1500 attack and 2000 defense, making the thing a huge tank basically like it, it's gonna do be able to do so much damage to your opponent so as a one of this card is nice because it is searchable through resonance since it's a level five or higher insect or you can also dump it to the graveyard with resonance as well making it a pretty nice utility card to have um in, in most scenarios so as a one of i felt that the card was pretty cool moving on to some of our higher level monsters now we do play one copy of scary moth so again remember what i was saying about this deck feeling like dragon link that is true, because it's basically insect.good stuff. The only drawback is that unlike dragons, which is one of the most beloved archetypes in the game, um, dragons have a lot of generic support, and they arguably have much better end bosses to end on, unlike bugs. Because of that, and, you know, we're, we're kind of pigeonholed into this, like, smaller, you know, pool of cards, so to speak, we kind of have to resort to this. While I don't really like playing this, because it is, like, a floodgate, you know, card and just doesn't promote much interaction at the end of the day um if you want to play this deck and be successful this is a card i do believe you have to run just because you can get it set up pretty easily with uh, some of the combos you run in this deck uh pretty much what this card is is an insect version of um should all window uh, each player can only special summon a monster once per turn while this is on the board um obviously it's a level six monster so there are you're gonna have to figure out how to get it on field which there are combos that allow you to do so um, and like I said, you can special summon this to your field after you're done with your combo and effectively give your opponent only one special for their turn, which obviously makes it very difficult for them to play most of the time. So as a one of I think it's fine. Am I proud of it? No. But again, uh, if you want to succeed with a deck like this because of the lack of utility you have as far as extra deck cards go and boss monsters are, you do kind of have to rely on that sometimes to be able to steal some games, especially from some of the more meta-focused matchups. Uh, but moving on, we do main deck one Kamungus to Sticky String Kaiju, because we can search this off of Resonance Insect, and having a searchable Kaiju in the deck is always a good thing in my opinion. Um, in addition to that, we also play one copy of Heavy Bee Trooper Mighty Neptune, another searchable card off Resonance, an amazing card because this allows us to shuffle back three banished insects into the main deck specifically to special summon this card and then uh, if this card is destroyed or banished um 
during the main phase, it actually activates its effect to special summon itself back immediately, which is kind of cool. And then once per turn during the end phase, you can target any other insect you control, and it gains 1,000 attack permanently. Uh, this is actually um, used in tandem with um, a card we play in the extra deck to help facilitate us special summoning the Scary Moth from Grave. But anyway, moving on, uh, we do play one Doomdozer, followed by one copy of Bear Grimm, uh, Shelled Emperor of the Forest Crown, which is basically a bigger Doomdozer. Uh, both of these cards have to banish insects uh, from the graveyard for Doomdozer and from the graveyard and or hand for Bear Grimm to special summon themselves. Doomdozer can only summon himself from hand, Baragrim can summon himself from hand or the graveyard, which is really nice. Again, keep in mind both of these cards are searchable off resonance, and you can also dump Baragrim to grave with resonance as well, just further solidifying the fact that resonance is pretty important. Um, but either way, both cards are really powerful, just big extender boss monsters, you could say. Uh, not much more to say about them uh, individually. And then to round out the last two monsters we play in this 41 card main deck, we're on double copies of Retaliating Sea, just as the hand trap of choice, a searchable hand trap of choice, and then uh, followed by two copies of Ash Blossom and Joyous Spring. Again, these are just very generic hand traps you can play. Retaliating Sea is effectively a macrocosmos on legs, which is really nuts, and Ash is just Ash. While it might not end the opponent's turn, it certainly does check a lot of the cards that most decks are playing, which I think is pretty cool. Uh, so that rounds out the monster count for this uh, particular deck. Now we're going to run into the spells. And one thing you're going to notice is that we're running a lot of one-offs for the spells. Now why that is, is because number one, some of the spells are searchable, which means we don't have to max out on them. And number two, a lot of the spells are hard ones per turns. So we don't want to brick on duplicates either. Again, I wanted this deck to be as consistent as possible. So we're going to start things off with one copy of Bee Trooper Formation, which is the Bee Trooper Field spell. Not only is it searchable, but it also serves as a monster reborn for any Bee Trooper in your graveyard. And if that wasn't crazy enough, if a face-up insect monster you control is destroyed, you get to special summon a Bee Trooper token, which is an insect earth, level three, attack a thousand, defense a thousand for free. Granted, that is a once per turn effect, but it's nice that if your opponent does clear something, you at least get a token, uh, you know, to keep board presence up. That way, on the following turn, you have ex additional uh, bodies on board to make plays with, which I think is cool. Then we play one copy of Bee Trooper Descent, a very good spell card. Again, it's just kind of like another extender. All it does is produce a Bee Trooper token. Uh, then it has another effect, which doesn't really come up all that much, but it can. And that is uh, if you control an insect monster with 3,000 or more attack when you activate this card, you can also destroy a uh, spell or trap on the field, non-target, which is nice. Then we uh, move on with one copy of Revival Swarm. This allows us to target a Battle Wasp in our grave and special summon it. It kind of sucks that it only targets a Battle Wasp and not just any insect. It, it would have been a lot better if it just targets any bug. Um, but it does have another effect where you can banish this card from your graveyard to target an insect you control, and it cannot be destroyed by battle or card effects until the end of the next turn. Sometimes we actually use this uh, to protect our Scary Moth uh, for the opponent's turn. That way they can't, be, they can't kill it by battle or destroy it by card effects, which is nuts. We then play one copy of Giant Ball Game. This is a continuous spell. It came out in a Photon Hypernova, if I'm not mistaken. Basically, during your main phase, uh, at, during the turn this card is activated, you can special summon a level 6 or lower insect from your graveyard. So this is another way we can get into Scary Moth pretty easily. This card, unfortunately, is not searchable, but it is a really good one of because it's effectively a reborn. And then it also has another effect where um, you can reveal an insect monster in your hand, Target a face-up monster the opponent controls and an insect you control with less attack than the revealed monster. Switch control of those monsters, and if you do, the monster that you took control of becomes an insect. And it's a permanent, uh, like, creature swap. You just take your opponent's monster, it becomes an insect, and you can attack with it, um, you know, use its effects, link with it, synchro with it, whatever you want. Very hilarious card, in my opinion. So those are some of the more... Um, archetypal specific uh, spells then moving on to some of the more generic spells we're on one instant fusion we play this because uh, there is a monster we can summon off of it in the extra deck so it's pretty self-explanatory followed by one called by the grave to round out the spells again called by being a good answer to a lot of um, hand traps and whatnot so now moving into the traps of which we only play two of again this is a 41 card deck list we play one lair wire a lot of you og players might remember this and we also play one beat trooper fly and sting now, Flying Sting is a searchable counter trap. It's a, a monster negate while we control a Beach Trooper monster, which is very good. Also, it can reset itself from the graveyard back to field by banishing an insect, which is really nice. And then Lair Wire is just something that I'm testing with. You don't need to run this. If you wanted to cut it and just play an even 40, you could. But I'm, I'm running this just because it's kind of nice. Um, it's not searchable, but it is re removal. It's targeted destruction by banishing an insect from grave. 
you can actually banish a resonance from your graveyard to pop a monster the opponent controls and then trigger the resonance banished effect which is really nice um and like i said it's just removal something that unfortunately the main deck kind of lacks uh outside of cards like Bergram, which uh, i forgot to mention when we went over it Bergram is a field nuke uh for the opponent's field which is kind of cool but um it doesn't have to be lair wire uh, it could also be there was a, a continuous trap a trap monster that i believe came out in maze of memories it, it's based off of the old insect monster jerai gumo uh somebody chime in the comments if you know what i'm talking about it was a continuous trap it's it's from the gate guardian support that came out in maze there's a jerai gumo trap card that's kind of cool um, when it, you activate it, you special summon it as a monster, and then it can pop any monster cards that are in the same column as it, and then um, it just serves as a level 5 insect monster on field, so you can use it to link or synchro as well. So if you don't want to run Lair Wire, you could test with that, or again, if you don't want to run either of those, you could just cut this and just play the deck at an even 40, but I just thought this was a cool homage to a lot of the older insect decks that did used to play this card. So anyway, that rounds out the main deck, guys, at 41 cards. Now we're going to jump into the extra deck, of which we are playing one Bee Trooper Cruel Saturnus and one Ultimate Great Insect as our fusion monsters of choice. The Saturnus is actually what we use the instant fusion on. Um, Saturnus is a newer uh, Bee Trooper card that came out in Cyberstorm Axis, the most recent core set. And it's a really cool level 5 dark insect fusion. If it's um, uh, fusion summoned you can, or I'm sorry, if it's special summoned, correction, you can add a Beat Trooper card from deck to your hand. So it's just a searcher, which is nice. Then, if an insect monster is banished face up, except during the damage step, you can uh, target one of your banished Beat Troopers and special summon it. So this card, it's a good card, but it doesn't solve all of the deck's problems, and that's why it's not as important to max out on. So we're just playing the one copy of it and just the one instant fusion to get to it. So if we see it, we see it. If we don't, it's not actually crucial to the deck's combo, but... Again, it's nice to have if we do wind up uh, drawing the instant fusion. Then for the ultimate great insect, we can fusion summon this card like properly with the listed material, or we can special summon it from the extra deck by tributing an insect with 2,000 or more defense that's equipped with an equip card. So this is why the uh, infinite antlion and the uh, bio insect armor come into play. Um, you know, they help us get to this fusion monster. It cannot be killed by battle. And then, uh, as a quick effect, once per turn during the battle phase, if there's a face-up card in a field zone, you can destroy all monsters the opponent controls. So another um, kind of like Rageki of sorts, which is really cool. Then moving on to our Synchros, uh, which are mostly Battle Wasp ones. Battle Wasp Azusa the Ghost Bow, Battle Wasp Halberd the Charge, Battle Wasp Hama the Conquering Bow, one Diablantis the Menacing Mantis, which is not a Battle Wasp, but we'll get to that shortly. Followed by one Battle Wasp Ballista the Armageddon. Now, all these synchros are great. The problem is that none of them are good to make going first. So we only go into these cards assuming we're going second. The Battle Wasps were a cool anime um, archetype. And as the name suggests, they focus on the battle phase. The problem is that, in my opinion, uh, I feel like a lot of them don't really do enough. Like, while they're okay cards, they're just not cards you want to make when going first. So they're, they're more there for help you uh, to help you push for game. Um, but they are still cool aesthetic-wise. And again, because we lock ourselves into insects a lot, you know, our pool of usable cards is a bit limited as far as extra deck insect, insects go. So we obviously run all of these. And then um, we do play the Diablantis, the only non-Battle Wasp Synchro. And that's because this card is just a generic foolish burial for any insect or plant on summon. And it can also target any monster on the field and make it a tuner, including itself, which could help us get into uh, Armageddon, who is the Battle Wasp boss monster. Uh, it can, um, uh, upon its summon, it banishes all insects from grave. And then monsters your opponent currently controls lose 500 attack and defense for each banished insect. Uh, it does piercing damage on defense monsters, and if it's destroyed, you can special summon uh, three of your banished level 11 or lower insects, which is pretty cool. So, as a synchro boss, it's actually pretty awesome. But moving on, we play one number three Cicada King, probably the best insect exceeds that the game has. Um, in my opinion, it's just a free negate. Not free, I mean, you detach material, but it's a monster negate. And every time this card changes battle positions, um, which it can change its battle position after it's negated something... Uh, you can actually special summon an insect monster uh, from your hand or graveyard in defense. So we can actually use this card to uh, special summon our Scary Moth as well, which I think is really, really cool, on top of it being just a monster negate as well. Uh, so now that rounds out uh, the fusion, synchros, and exceeses, now we're going to dive into the links, of which we play duplicates of a lot of them because they're so important. We're on two Beat Trooper Armorhorn and two Insector Picofelina. 
two very good uh, link, link 2 insects. Armorhorn allowing you to double summon, basically. Uh, and then Pico Felina basically letting you discard a card to equip an insect from your deck to any other insect you control. Not only setting up for the uh, perfectly ultimate uh, insect plays, or um, ultimate grade insect, excuse me, because uh, you can, you know, you'd have an insect equipped with an equip card who has 2,000 or more defense. But you can also use it to abuse Resonance Insect as well by equipping it to something uh, and then, you know, linking it off and triggering Resonance's effect, which is nice. Uh, then we play one Seraphim Papillion. is just a generic, not generic, but an Insect Link 3. It's kind of like a Monster Reborn effect as well uh, during the opponent's turn, which is nice. And then uh, to round out the last two extra deck monsters, we played two copies of giant b trooper invincible atlas which is the b trooper boss very cool insect link four protects itself special summons b troopers from your deck and can also bump itself uh up to 5,000 attack which is really cool so that rounds out the main and extra deck we'll briefly run, run through the side which isn't finished actually i just kind of threw it together with some of the cards that um my uh, good friend had lying around because again i helped him build this deck but in the side we're running a play set of dark holes one duster a playset of contact C's as a hand trap, you know, for some matchups. The uh, rest of the Kamungus, we, we side the two of them. Uh, we play the third Retaliating and the third Ash in the side. And then just some generic trap cards, uh, two more Lair Wires and two Warning Points to round out the sideboard. Again, this sideboard is obviously not definitive. It's kind of just, you know, we're working with what we had at our disposal. But, you know, build the side deck to your own personal preference. Um, I still think that there's things that, you know, you just play like the Kaijus, I, I think, you know, will stay in the side along with contact C's, um, but everything else is pretty much a flex spot for the most part. So that rounds out my insect deck for the July, 2023 format. Again, this is more of a casual budget build. Um, the deck is extremely cheap, extra deck included. And if you want to get into Yu-Gi-Oh and you want to play like a combo oriented deck, then this is a very good starting point. And not only that, but it's also a lot of fun to play. So with that being said, guys, this is Nick. Uh, we're going to be wrapping things up here. Stay tuned on the channel for more content coming your way, especially post Duelist Nexus coming out in basically a week's time at time of recording. I can't be more excited for that um, to release. I have a lot of ideas and a lot of content I'm going to be bringing to the channel. Uh, based around Duelist Nexus. So if you want to make sure you don't miss those videos, subscribe, like the video down below. And this is Nick, ending his turn.